Welcome to Lowndes Legal Talk, where we share perspectives on legal and business issues affecting you. My name is Drew Sorrell. I'm a partner at Lowndes, which is a law firm in Orlando, Florida. Maury? Hi, my name's Maury Raskin. I have represented uh, management in respect of its employment and labor relations for a long time, probably 35 to 38 years. Okay. And today we're going to talk about in this particular segment, because there is a first segment where we talked about employer employee claims under COVID. This time we're going to talk about third party claims. Um, so Maury, I think what we're talking about today is that if I have um, Joe's bake shop on the corner and I am offering my goods to uh, the customers of my neighborhood and unfortunately somebody gets sick with COVID, uh, that's the kind of liability I think we're about to talk about. Does that sound fair? Correct. And it's the liability to the, for in this example, the customer. Right. And so in this place, you've got, in taking my Joe's Bake Shop analogy, um, you've basically got a claim possible under civil law. And what does that mean? What that means is that you as a owner of the company, of the baking shop in this case, can be sued in civil court for almost the same type of problem that you would have if you suffered a slip and fall on your premises. So if a customer comes in and buys their bagels or their wedding cake or whatever they buy, and they legitimately say, we'll talk about what that means in a minute, that I contracted COVID from one of your workers then you're off to the races, so to speak, to the courthouse to have a good old fashioned traditional personal injury lawsuit. Um, so that then raises the question, what's the standard? Um, do you think it's the same in this situation or is it different than for instance, if we're, I were talking about employee employers? Well, I think that it is different. I think that it's a reasonable person standard and it's a preponderance of the evidence, whatever that means. I remember when I was in law school, my evidence teacher told me a preponderance of the evidence is a teensy weensy bit more than the other guy has. Right. Um, it's a very academic analysis. And, and uh, whereas in workers' comp, there is not that standard of uh, uh, proof in a civil case, the plaintiff has to carry the burden and has to convince the trier of fact, which is a jury, that they contracted the disease at your bakery as a result of your negligence or failure to protect them from the disease. In, in talking about this, as lawyers <clears throat> do, um, in talking to clients about this, the question has been raised, well, realistically, if somebody brings a claim, am I really thinking that they're going to be able to prove that case? And my personal answer to that is a good lawyerly, well, it depends. And it depends on the circumstances, right? Right. Right. So with respect to that, if you have a situation where the whole neighborhood has been hit with COVID and the person's family has been hit with the claimant in this particular instance, family has been hit with COVID and it's going to be really difficult for there to be proved in court that one caused the other, meaning that my patronage of this hypothetical bake shop led me to contract the disease, then that's probably a claim that you can ultimately win if you went to trial. Right. But contrast that, if you will, to a different set of facts where no one in my family has it. I'm the only one that went to your bake shop. I've gone to other uh, restaurants or bakeries or stores and not gotten it. But at your store, you've had five or 10 employees come down with it. You've had a number of customers come down with it. And then I have as well. And it is the looks like a duck, quacks like a duck argument. But it may be reasonable to contend under those circumstances that the commonality of your bakery cannot be overlooked. Right. And 
I think you also have to consider that in, in, in this particular realm, you can win and still lose. Right. Meaning that you could have a claim brought against you and have to defend a lawsuit and you can ultimately be vindicated. However, that may happen with court, but having spent all the attorney's fees and costs related to that, you still will have lost because it's a pyrrhic victory due to the, the outlay for um, the yeah. Layer on top of that, the publicity that will go with the lawsuit. Right. And as a practical, just a one to think about, I think one thing a bake shop owner or any other owner of, this, of a commercial establishment can do is be demonstrable or demonstrative, I should say, in the training and education of your employees and the enforcement of your policies and procedures with respect to PPE and the procedures that they're using. So for instance, taking our bake shop, if I have a lackadaisical attitude about making sure my employees actually wear their masks or don't have them hanging below their chin or below their nose, but instead I enforce the policies, which is to make sure that at all times they're wearing their mask, it's going to be a, a good fact for me when I'm defending the suit. And more importantly, as far as this one to grow on kind of comment, it also is something that's going to show to the public that I'm taking this seriously. And it's unlikely that we're the ones that gave you COVID. Right. And, um, and what do you do if you're the shop owner and you have a sign on your door that asks people to wear masks and someone walks in and doesn't or doesn't want to wear a mask or refuses to wear a mask? So what I think you're asking me, Maury, is how do you deal with a quasi belligerent customer? And you know, that belligerence can take a different, different tax. So for instance, it could be the person who just refuses to wear a mask or the person that refuses to put on the mask after you ask them to put one on. But I think as a shopkeeper, you have to understand that your protecting your employees and protecting your business is probably paramount. I think the other thing that you have to think and consider is if you are training your employees appropriately, you should hand to them some tools, metaphorical tools, that include how to de-escalate situations like that. Um, I think you also need to understand and help your employees understand that if they receive a comment that, well, I have a First Amendment right not to wear a mask, or I have a religious freedom right not to wear a mask, which is something I've been seeing and reading about people arguing I think it's important for you, the shop owner, and for your employees to understand that there really is no First Amendment right or religious freedom right with respect to mask wearing. That's just not supported in the law. Um, and so I think that you don't necessarily want your employees to be arguing with the customer about whether or not they have a particular right. I do think you need to inoculate them, to use a term, um, from being concerned when the customer says, well, I have a First Amendment right, and they're now worried they're going to get sued for that. So what I'm saying is it's a coupling of basically de-escalation techniques with some knowledge to understand that you as the owner of the premises have a fairly unfettered right to protect your employees, the business, and so on, and to not provide service to people if they're going to take actions which are dangerous to others which would include, in this case, not wearing a mask. So I hear you saying it's a, for lack of a better language, it's a commercial risk of whether or not you are willing to risk losing the customer or losing the lawsuit. Right. And I think that's exactly right. I think that you probably are better off teaching people that they should not, um, teaching your client, your, your employees, that they should um, enforce the policies evenly. That way you can avoid the ultimate lawsuit. I think that you have less risk of a lawsuit claiming somehow an infringement of First Amendment rights or religious freedom. I think that the, the tort issue is the real issue and that the other ones are not really issues. Right, right. Is there insurance for these kinds of claims? Well, it's an interesting question. The short answer is maybe, and it all depends on the type of insurance policy that you have. Um, I will also point out that if you do have coverage, you probably purchased it before anybody said anything about a pandemic. 
because there, to my own knowledge, is no current insurance company that's writing coverage that would cover uh, a claim under this particular uh, type of liability. Um, and then you have to examine, and this is true of all um, insurance questions, the first thing you have to do is examine the policy you were issued and the, the language and the insuring clauses and then the exceptions to those insuring clauses. Um, that would give you an answer, but frequently what you wanna pay attention to is environmental type risk um, because there are specific policies that specifically exclude coverage for disease um, and so on. So the answer is you may have coverage, but it kind of depends on what not kind of, it absolutely depends on what the policy says. Um, so I think in that sense, we've, we've talked a little bit about uh, what's going on currently, but I guess the next question we should talk about is what's going on in the world of legislation right. in this area. And it's, it's hard to know what will happen in the future. I know there's been debate or at least suggestion if it hasn't risen to the level of debate about whether or not there will be liability waivers um, in this arena uh, to get the economy up and running, whether or not there'll be limitations on damage awards, whether or not there'll be changes in the standard of proof that's required. Um, I think all of it is in play and wonder if you've heard of even other things that have been considered. Well, there have been a couple of states, and I think South Carolina, if I remember correctly, which I'm not a South Carolina lawyer, but I think South Carolina actually has changed its work comp laws to directly address liability for um, COVID with respect to employees. There's been quite a bit of discussion at the federal level about whether or not a federal law will be put in place to provide a tort bar for, again, for Joe's Bakery um, to prevent them from having to deal with these types of uh, COVID related lawsuits. But as I understand it, those have stalled um, in, in DC. Um, and I think that there, you were telling me earlier today that there actually has been um, in Florida an executive order right. that provides for first responders essentially to automatically be presumed to be covered for um, work comp if they contract COVID. Is that? Correct. Yeah, Florida uh, in the spring, through its chief financial officer, issued an order that presumed that first responders would be covered, um, healthcare workers would be covered if they contracted the disease at work. Only applies to state employees at this point, but it may foreshadow what is coming in the future uh, for a broader range of employees. Right. And it, I think there are different flavors that it can take as far as a, a minute. Well, I say that. I think that you can have different approaches to how you address tort bars, absolute um, prevention of lawsuits. You can have capping of damages and things like that, or you can have... I think this is the approach that South Carolina took, is that you can also raise the, the measure of proof required. So for okay. instance, you know, from, we were talking about um, earlier that you have a reasonable person standard for was this person acting reasonable or not in the situation. And if they were not, that will give rise to liability in the courts. And you can change that standard to be much higher um, as far as were they disregarding or were they reckless in how they were acting. So I think that there's different ways that this can be brought out. The question is in current um, political environment, if any of these legislative initiatives will move forward or not. Um, with respect to that, I, I think that's all we intended to talk about today. Maury, did you have anything else to add? No, other than uh, thanking people for watching and listening and express my appreciation that they did. I'm very thankful. So take care, stay safe. Agreed. Stay safe, and if you need anything, reach out. Thank you for joining us for Lowndes Legal Talk. For more information about today's topic or to learn more about our attorneys and practices, please visit lowndes-law.com.